GAS is a three letter acronym that stands for Gear Acquisition Syndrome. In the music industry, it can also be called Guitar Acquisition Syndrome. For musicians, it's the compulsive and unrelenting urge to own more guitars, more amplifiers, and more effects pedals. Gas can strike in many different ways for each individual. It can be as simple as just hearing someone else play a guitar or amplifier that you don't yet currently own and having that sound go round and round in your head until you eventually cave and go and buy one for yourself. You might be asking yourself, what does gas have to do with creating great music? Some would say nothing at all. Others would say it all helps the creative process. The road to finding the perfect sound can be long and expensive, or you might just be happy with what you've got. If you do go on the tone journey, look out. For some people, including myself, experimenting with different gear definitely gives me different inspirations musically. What I like to do personally, anytime I get a new amplifier, it usually replaces one that I have. I could only imagine how big my collection would be if I never sold anything. That said, there's a collection that exists that would dwarf my collection had I never have sold anything. And we're about to take a look at that. Dave's collection is a result of years of collecting, a love for music, and a love for music gear. I hope you enjoy. Today we're heading over to one of my good friend's place. His name's Dave. He's been playing guitar for a very long time, and from what I understand, he's never sold anything that he's bought. So his collection's supposed to be somewhat legendary amongst musicians who have actually seen it. I haven't seen it in person until today, so this should be a lot of fun. His pedal collection, from what Dave said, is as big as some music stores that he's been into. So this should be a lot of fun to check out, and I'm really looking forward to it. Hey, Dave. How are you, mate? Good to see you. Likewise. Thanks, thanks. Ready to do this? Ready. All right, Jumping. let's do it. As I made my way in, Dave invited me into his guitar room. So this is a really impressive collection of amps and guitars from what I've seen so far. How long did it take to get to this size? Probably 15 years. Yeah? Yeah, 15, 20 years. Yeah. Easily. And what what happened with this with in terms of amplifiers? I know you've got a lot of Fender amps, so I'm guessing you're, you're a, Fender, a Fender junkie, yeah. much like myself. <laughs> um, yeah, look, you could say that. Uh, started off with probably that BC, yep. uh, Blues Deville. That was one of the, one of the earlier ones. Um, they might have been early 90s yeah. to mid 90s. Um, and then from there, it just grew. <laughs> It just grew out of control. Yeah. I've known you for a number of years, and I, I definitely haven't seen any of these out at a gig or at a jam over the last, well, since I've known you. So it, it's an impressive collection. Which ones of these do you do you use most? If... Uh, in terms of use, probably uh, the Blues Deluxes. Yeah. And um, Supersonic. Yep. Deluxe Reverb and yep. Blues Junior. Okay, Blues cool, Junior cool. probably gets more use than any, any other amp. Yeah, nice, nice. That's in terms of guitar amps, in terms of bass, uh, mark bass. I, I think when we were talking the other day at Mount D's, you mentioned that the your bass gas wasn't anywhere near as bad as the electric guitar gas, is it? No, it's not. Okay. With bass, you usually find a nice sound pretty quickly and a nice feeling guitar, bass guitar or two. Yeah. With guitar, as you know, the hunt for that magic sound never stops yeah yeah as soon as you find something you really really like there's always something that you think hmm i think i like that and what triggers that for you like i know it's different for everybody but is there anything that you think do you hear other people use a particular amp that influences you to want to buy it or do you just go out on the hunt <laughs> uh no that that's influence is certainly one thing uh there's one guy who should remain nameless um who triggered Things like the supersonic, uh, things like that beast. Yeah, uh, I think I know who that just, is. Yes, you do. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just a magnificent player. When, when you hear some of those sounds, you think, yeah, look, I, I do really like that. Yeah. And you know, when you pick up the same amp or the same guitar, it'll never sound the same. Mm. But still, you'd kind of like to approximate the sort of sound you're hearing. Yeah, I've, I've done that with gear too. I've heard other guys use stuff. I remember when I heard another guy use a Vox AC30, I went out and bought one the next <laughs> yeah. day. But, you know, he's playing 
10 times ahead of mine and he'd make any amp sound great. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's always one of those things. So in terms of age, which are some of the amps you've had the longest or which are some of the older amplifiers that you've got? Probably this lot. Uh, yep. These are 58 Deluxe, Harvard, Princeton, yep. um, Tremolux. They're all about 57, 58, 59 vintage. Uh, and these are originals? Yes. Yeah, yes. wow. Okay, um, cool. Except that one, that's been retweeted and that's had the speaker changed. Yeah. But the other ones are pretty well as they were 40, 50 years ago. Now, do you buy a lot of stuff online or do you do you resource stuff um, no, through? Combination. Combination stuff, yeah. 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 So is there anything here in this collection that you haven't used live? Oh, most of the things I don't use live. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Um, I did try using the Deluxe in a small gig, but yep. about 14 watts. Unless you mark it up, it doesn't cut it. They've, these have got a really nice mellow sound, but they're really not loud enough. Yeah, wow. Well. Um, they vary sort of between 12, 14, 16 watts. Uh, the champs are about three and a half, four and a half watts. You, you can't use in gigs. Yeah. But the build have used in gigs, Deluxe have used in gigs, Junius have used in gigs, uh, Fender uh, Baseman have used in gigs. Um, yeah. I love this tweed collection. It's it's something something awesome. So you've got uh, two champs. Have, yeah, two. yeah. Yeah. Well, tweed champs, there's yeah. some more. Uh, blackface. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, love it. I do have a bit of a tweed fetish. Um, yeah, nice. And, and look, these things are amazing. Yeah. Considering they're 50, 60 years old, when you look at them, when they were made, tolerance levels were plus or minus 15%. Mm -hmm. But these things still sound magic. They've got a really nice warm sound. Yeah. How would you compare something like this to like a modern take? Is it an audible difference between if you've had a chance to compare the original? Because a lot of people wouldn't have the chance to either own or test a 50, 1950s style amp. Have you put it up against like a, a reissue or anything around the, the same sort of wattage that's current? Yeah, I've, I've done that with um, with things like deluxe reverbs between yep. say 65 and a reissue. Mm -hmm. And the original definitely sounds nicer. Yeah, wow, cool. When you put them together. But if you take an amp to a gig, once you introduce bass, drums, yeah. other instruments, you lose that uniqueness. Mm -hmm. in, in a live gig, there's absolutely no reason why any of these things wouldn't cut it in yeah, terms yeah. of sound. There are differences between all of them, but in a gig, you're not comparing, you're not eight being an amp. Yeah. We're at uh, Guitar Center or Billy Hyde's <laughs> right now, and we've got the blackface section of the uh, of the collection, which is some of my favorite amps of all time. You got a 65 Deluxe Reverb. No, that, that's a 65 Deluxe Reverb, oh. that's, that's a reissue. So that's the original, Wow, that, that's a reissue. <laughs> How do they compare to each other, first off? The original does have a nicer sound. Yep. Um, as soon as I heard that, I thought I'd have to have that. Yeah. Um, I did have a, what was I going? I was using a 61 335. Yeah. And the combination of those two was just magic. Yeah. Um, ended up picking up the DR, but not, not, not the 335. That uh, was a little bit um, out of my range. Are they fairly similar in terms of what, what speakers are in them and stuff? In, or are they, are they a little bit different from memory? Um, I've had the speaker change in the original. Okay. It's got the cool. Weber in there. Yep, um, nice. This one, I can't remember what's in there now. I think it's just the stock standard. Might be the Jensen. Yeah, stock standard yeah, Jensen. Yeah, yeah. CK12s, I think they are. Whereas um, Supersonic, which is kind of an offshoot yep. of the Deluxe Reverb, that's got a Cannabis Rex in there instead of the original. Yep. The original was just a little too harsh. Yeah, I found that with, with mine as well. That, uh, yeah, the speaker replacement's always good. Yeah. I even did that to my Blues Deluxe as well. Makes a huge difference to, to the tones. Yeah, well, the same with mine of the Blues Deluxes. Um, yeah. Put a Celestian in there and didn't like it. Yeah. Oh, I'll get that changed. I, I haven't used that Blues Deluxe since I changed it. Yeah. So clearly it's done nothing for me. <laughs> Fair enough. They're, they're a temperamental amp, I think, to get right sometimes, those ones. So you've got a couple these, of old amps here as well. Beasts. Um, I think that's a 74 Vibro Champ. Yeah. Um, these are, one's a 65, one's a 66. Hmm. I think that's, I think that'd be the, well, 66 and 67. I'll let, let have to check. But really nice amps. Really, really nice amps. Yeah, well. Is, um, this looks very much like uh, the Vibro Champ on the floor looks a lot like the recent 68 Deluxe reissues that they've they've come out in terms of the, 
the face plate. So, yep. yeah. The Very only cool. difference is 68. Uh, they had the white white stripe going around. Ah, yep. That, yep. That's what differentiates 68 from the other uh, silver face. Cool, cool. So out of um, the amps you've got on this side, I, I see you use the supersonic a lot. Would that be your, your favourite out of, you know, out of the moderately? Lot. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, supersonic Power use all the time. Uh, that one there, I don't use much anymore. Mm -hmm. I'm a supersonic clean, clean channel one, that's very similar to that, pretty much the same. Do you use particular guitars with, with certain amps, uh, or do you, you're happy to sort of mix and match with what you got? <clears throat> oh. No, I mix and match. Yeah. I don't think I've ever, no, I've, I've never picked a certain guitar to go with a certain amp or the other way around. Yeah. Uh, typically cool. float between strats, tellies, maybe yep. PRS. Beautiful. Every now and then pick up a Gibson, but usually go back to a strat or a telly. Yeah. So of the time. we're surrounded by maybe 12 guitars, I guess, in here already. Is is that all of them? Oh, there are probably a few more floating around. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool, cool. No worries. All right, so over here we've got the, the high gain amplifier collection, or the higher gain amplifier collection. We've got an angle on the floor here, which was the first amp I remember seeing you play, actually, when I first saw you. And Probably you had it dead deep. clean, and I couldn't believe it at that time. Yes, yeah, yeah, pretty clean, yep. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look, it took me a long time to start using a dirty channel. Yeah. Uh, I've always kind of preferred the cleaner, cleaner channel. That probably explains why I like Fender so much. Yeah, yeah, you can't beat I like that it to be clean. Yeah. Just breaking. Yeah. But I, look, I do like a nice, dirty, saturated sound yep. in some cases, but not all the time. So these are 50 watt amps, is that right? The Most of these are 50-ish. Yep. Angle's 50, uh, boogie's 50, um, that's 100. Yep. Serio tone's 100. Um, little Gully and Kruger's 100. Yeah. And this little beast is probably about half a watt. You can plug your guitar into it and play through that little speaker in the cigarette box. Yeah. Or you can plug it into an external speaker and you get quite an, you, you get you get enough volume to play even with a drummer. How are these powered? There's a I think there's an eye volt battery inside. Yeah wow so okay. the battery dies you'd have to pull it apart. <laughs> yeah, yeah cool. Where do you find something like this? I've never seen one of these. All in the US. Yeah. yeah. Nice. Cool yeah the camel yeah, I, uh, cigarette. I did, I did see somebody selling them locally somewhere sort of a few years back. Mm -hmm. But it's obviously a gimmick. Yeah, no, nice. We'll have to, uh, yeah, we'll have cute, to fire cute, that up cute. later. <laughs> cool. <coughs> that one there, 100 watts. Um, uh, 100 watts. <clears throat> 100 watts. 100 watts. Wow. And if you're looking for a, for a portable amp, oh, yeah? you don't get much smaller than that. Wow. It's quite heavy for its size, but at the same time, for 100 watts, it's it extremely is heavy. light. <laughs> I, mean, it's, it's, I think from the early 80s. Yeah. Well, early, early or mid 80s. And in those days, um, transformers are still pretty big. Yeah. So if you wanted to generate 100 watts, you needed a quite quite a powerful transformer. And are they they almost look like six six inch Two speakers? Sixes, yep. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't often see that in amps. That's that's really cool. So you've got a couple of Mesa Boogie amps or Mesa Boogie, depending on where you live, of course. Yes. Um, tell us a little bit about these two guys. Uh, that's a Mark II Two C, yeah. 100 watts, very loud. Yeah. Very heavy. That's not going to make too many gigs. It's just just too heavy. <laughs> yeah. It's nice and small, but yeah. is it heavier than the the one under it? Oh yeah, yeah it oh, is. Yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, that one there, uh, that's fifty watts. Yep. Yeah. Actually, really like it. It's got a really nice clean sound. Mm -hmm. Chimey, glassy, Fenderish cleans, beautiful, and the um, dirty channel is really really nice. But that that's also pretty heavy. Yeah, they're definitely two amps I, I didn't even know you yeah. you own. So yeah, I mean. Yeah, very cool amp. No, that, that, that's a really nice amp. Yeah. Beautiful. I take it that's got a, a few different, maybe two or three channels, is it? or from Two channels yeah. and each one's got a boost. Yeah, so. cool. Beautiful. So over here we've got an Overtone Special by yeah. Seriotone. These are a great amp. And you've got the head. I didn't know you actually had one yeah. of those guys. They're pretty pretty cool. Like a Dumble clone, I guess, is what you'd put them in up. Yeah, uh, most of my amps are combos. Yeah. I tried a couple of Marshalls, actually got a couple of Marshall heads. Um, they're not here, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Too bulky, too messy. Um, I thought I'd try something smaller. Uh, Serotone's got pretty, pretty, pretty good reputation, so I ended up getting this tried it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nice little lamp, but it's not as convenient as, as combo, so I'm yeah. 
doesn't do much gigging. No, I, I did the same thing. I bought a two rock head and box and after about three or four gigs, I was like, I need a combo. They're yeah. just, they're, they are that much easier. And I take it this is a, a single 12. What's the 1912? What's... It's a single 12. Yeah. Uh, these come in 1912. It's a single uh, single 12, 1922, which is two 12s. Oh, okay, um, yeah. What's, is that a, no, it's not a 22. I've got a beat up hole 22 floating around. Yep. That's, that's also two 12s. Cool, cool. So if I need to use an external comp, uh, speaker, I typically use one of these. As we were taking a look at the rest of the gear currently in the room, I happened to notice that Dave used a lot of gaffer tape on his amps and guitar cases. I eventually asked Dave about his reasons for using the gaffer tape, and he began to explain some horror stories while travelling on some airlines. Yeah, you will find this gaffer all over the place. <laughs> yeah, I was cool. looking for the gaffered handle. Uh, no, to, to put good. to put the gaffer over the latches because yes, yeah, yeah. if they get open, yeah. they don't handle yeah. these well at all. No. Like I've, I've, I've seen them throwing right. them around, and I, matter of fact, I was watching one guitar. I can't remember whether it was a guitar or the bass coming out of the plane on the conveyor belt, halfway down, falls off, hits the ground. He picks it up, just chucks it back on. Yeah, wow. Well. Up here, looking through the glass window, there's no point trying to, there's no point yelling at him. You son of a bitch, yeah. take care. Oh, no. Was uh, that yours or? Yeah, mine. Oh, yeah. oh man. Yeah. You know what the TSA did yeah. in the US to me? I, you know that, I got that 52 reissue tally. The, the year I bought yeah. that, I had it on the plane. It wasn't even locked. <coughs> and they broke off the latches because <coughs> you push the lock sideways to open the cases. Yep. Not up and yep. down. So they've obviously just tried to go up and down and they've crowbarred the, the, the latches off the, the case completely. It wasn't what? even locked because they, they did their TSA check and then oh, they the just checking. then they just yeah. taped around it with gaffer. Yep, yep. <laughs> it's like, thanks for breaking that. <laughs> um, that. Yeah. Oh. They got broken. Oh, in transit. yeah, okay. It's an obvious problem that airlines don't take enough care when handling fragile items such as guitars. There's horror stories posted all over the internet of the obvious mishandling of expensive instruments. All right, so over to the bass amp collection, which is, from what I can tell, not anywhere near the size of the guitar amp collection. No, in terms of bass amps, little mark, mark, mark bass combo, um, Yeah, that does all the gigs. That's been doing all the gigs for years. Yeah. So reliable, so convenient, so light. Yeah. Um, 15 inch. You sometimes use that with a um, 750 watt SWR head. Yeah. Um, sometimes might use a 410 box. Um, also got a Lab Systems 250 watt combo. <laughs> yeah. Um, cool. In terms of bass amps, that's pretty well it. Yeah. I mean, you can't really go wrong with the Mark bass stuff. I think being <laughs> as light as they are and as loud as they are, yeah. you know, it's a whole new world for bass players. I think having having something that light and and powerful, yeah, they, they absolutely sound great. All right, so you've also got an acoustic guitar amp here. These are fantastic, these AEs. Ah, oh, they're awesome, awesome. So it's, you know what, I've noticed there's not one sort of like cheap and nasty amp in the room. They're, it's all good stuff. This is, this is a pretty sweet collection. There's no like Behringer digital amp in the side or, you know, Line 6 Spider hiding out in another room, is there? Or? I do have multiple Behringer devices. Oh yeah, no, I've got their mixes I've got as well. <laughs> two, I've got two little DIs. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> little Behringer ones. Yeah, yeah. Love them. Cool, cool. <clears throat> no, I don't have too many Behringer items. So th this guy here is something you can use for, um, you can plug mics in as well, is that right? Or? Yeah, uh, two inputs, two channels effectively. Um, guitar, yeah. mic. Beautiful. So looking at the just the amp collection, have you ever um, sold any of the amps that you've purchased over the years, or is this everything that you've had? Um, oh, I have managed to sell a couple. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember what they, they were in the... One was a bass amp. Um, yeah. Oh, I don't know if that counts. TKO one. Oh, no, it is. It is. That was my <laughs> first bass amp. Yeah. And I. it was a bad, bad mistake. Yeah. Um, I got sold a dud. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with the amp, but at 80 watts... That's not something you get, you go gigging with. No. So they end up being a practice amp, use it for years and years and years. Don't use it much anymore. So that that got moved. Yeah. Um, what else did I had a Zoo Maiden. It became clear that Dave hadn't sold much off over the years. This would account for how the collection grew to the enormity that you see today. All right. 
So this is a beautiful collection of amplifiers. Are you still on the search for tone or certain types of tone or is the search pretty much over now and you're just adding to your room of beautiful amps? Search is not over. Yeah. <laughs> As you know, yeah. that search for the magic sound for some reason with guitarists never ends. Mm -hmm. um, I kind of envy people who, who <clears throat> settle down on one guitar and one amp I wish I could do that. I, I, I can't. <clears throat> I can't. I'll swap between kind of different amps, different guitars. It yeah. doesn't really bother me, I guess. Well, it doesn't, it doesn't. Um, yeah. So, no, the search isn't, isn't complete. I think, like, for just speaking from my own experience, I, I like lots of different sounds. I, I like yeah. tallies, I like 335s, I like strats. <clears throat> and yeah, I don't yeah. always just like one thing. Yeah. And it's great having that versatility, especially if you're playing different types of music too. I think it's important yeah. to have you know, sounds that suit that kind of mm. genre or just inspire you in different ways. I, I guess, um, you know, judging from your collection, certain amps would trigger certain types of ideas or yep. music, <clears throat> musical yeah. ideas from you as well. It's kind of like different foods. Yeah. Different tastes, different flavors, same with guitars and mm -hmm. amps. Yeah. It is nice playing different ones every now and then. That's that, absolutely. Yeah. So where do you see your collection going from here on out? Do you... Uh, do you see it expanding or shrinking, or how's the uh, the, uh, the need for more stuff? Probably a combination of both. Yeah, <clears throat> I mean, some, some things are going to go. I'd, like the DR never gets used. Um, yeah, some of these Tweedy things are probably going to go Fender Twin. Yeah, that Tweed Twin reissue. We never bonded. <laughs> it's just too clinical for my taste. Yeah. Um, so that, that'll, that'll go eventually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can see why you'd want to keep, obviously, some of the, the smaller ones that are just great old amps that you, you even actually enjoy. I think, you know, for myself, yeah. if, I don't, if I don't use something or I, I don't like it, I, I have no hesitations in, in selling stuff off. Is, is it ever tough to, to part with it because it does match everything uh, else that it, you've got? It, it is tough. It is tough. I'm not sure. I'm not sure I'd ever like to get rid of some of these old tweedy ones. Yep. I just like them. They're, they're, they're a, it's almost like art. Yeah, absolutely. Piece of history yeah. from... Uh, from and, and history. I mean, yeah. when I look at some of these, um, it just amazes me. These things are 50, 60 years old. Yep. And they still work well, whereas a supersonic, <laughs> I had it for one year and the handle broke. Yeah. <laughs> that, I, I absolutely agree. Yeah. Like, I had a Fender Blues Deluxe. The second day I had it, the handle broke. Handle broke. Yep. Brand new. So it's something to be said for amps that are this old working yeah. to the to this day have you ever had any of them restored or anything like that or are they all original from in terms all of electronics? the only one that's yeah. had any um plastic surgery done on it is a uh, tremolux yep uh that's been retweeted and it has had the speaker changed the speaker was changed because by the time i got it, it had to grab your hole on it yeah that was done in, in transit okay wow nah, and retweeting was done before i got it yep Oh, that's, you know, that looks fantastic. And I, I believe this is your favourite one out of the Fender Amps at the moment. It, it is, yeah. it is. Uh, it's got a beautiful sound, nice and warm, single 15. Really nice, really nice amp. It's a good size too in yeah. terms of, you know. It is, it's nice yeah. and light, but it's still got the US power transformer, so I, I, don't, I don't use it much in gigs. Oh, because you just step down. To, I don't see it. As we continue to chat, I happen to notice a few other amplifiers wedged under some guitar cases that Dave brought in. Hot Rod Deluxe. Oh, uh, yeah. With black Tolex, uh, Blues Deluxe with white Tolex. <laughs> and that's okay, Blues cool. Deluxe in tweed. Yeah, yeah. All right. I got sweet. that one. I got that one first in, in, in black. I liked it, so I thought I want to get a tweed one. Yeah. So I'll buy the next one. I'll go and pick it up. I look at it. I think, hang on, that's not tweed. That's white Tolex. Yeah, yeah. I already committed to the purchase, so I had to buy it, so oh. I bought it, bought it home. And then I bought the tweed one, because I, I said, got a feed tweed <laughs> fetish. <clears throat> so I eventually bought that one, and I thought, I'll, I'll get rid of that. Yeah, so yeah. Put them side by side, test it out. Ooh, I like the sound of it. <laughs> one. Yeah. I actually prefer the sound out of that one than the other ones. So I started thinking, okay, I can gut that and put the guts, put the actual amp into the tweed cabinet. Yeah. But it's not the same. I think that's a 94, or 95, 96, 90. One's a 95, one's a 96, 96, and 97. Yeah, okay. So that, that kind of vintage is about one year difference between them. Yeah. But mm. no, I decided against that. So 
So this is the there. this is the eBay uh, area over here, is it there? The wind's gonna go. Yep. One of these will probably go. Yep. Um, two C will probably go. I mean, I, I don't use a two C. It's too heavy. Yeah. So with a collection this large, have you ever had any buyer's remorse? Say the next day after you purchase something. In terms of amps, uh, the Tweed Twin probably fits into that category. Yeah. Um, the probably best example is um, this beast. One of my mates did one of these I picked up. I thought it's a nice little workhorse. Um, different. It's just white tape. Oh, it's okay, I thought the paint was coming out. Okay, no, yeah. just white tape. So what's this, the Dan Electro? Dan Electro, yeah. uh, lipstick pickups. It's all right, but he, again, we just never bonded. Yeah. And Still got the price tag. <laughs> tag that's, that's how much yeah, wow. we failed to bond. <laughs> so what is it about this one that you're, you're not a huge fan of? Just the tone or the feel or the look? Oh, or? Okay. Just does nothing for me. Yeah. So. Yeah, I've been there. So that's not bad, considering how much gear you've got, just to have one piece of gear that uh, you thought, oh no. So what's what's the plans for this guy? No, nah, it'll, it'll, it'll go. While Dave said he was keen on selling a few items from his collection, I'm not sure I was convinced. My guess is the larger the collection grows, the harder it is to actually sell things off. All right, so over to some of your lovely Gibson guitars. These all look awesome. What have, mm. we, uh, what have we got here? <laughs> Gold top. Yeah. Thirtieth anniversary. But a bit heavy. Yeah. Doesn't get much airplay. Wow. Too heavy for gigging. Yeah, it's not bad for Liz Paul. It's it's But after three hours though, yeah, it does your yeah. neck and shoulders in a bit. Is that a one, one of the machine is broke in transit. Yeah. Never fixed it. You can still tune it perfectly like <laughs> yeah, that. Nice. Just goes show quality quality equipment. Yeah. Now is that a, um, a sort of certain type of reissue or is that a stock sort of um, Les Paul standard? Uh, or... Standard. Yep. <clears throat> standard. It's just because it's a 30th anniversary. Oh, this one's nice. Another one, Amber Burst. It's a little bit lighter. I've got a feeling that might be chambered. Yeah. Just a, actually looks like a custom shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it is. It is a custom shop, yeah. Yeah, I don't often see them with this sort of um, uh, finish. Yeah. Very, very Again, nice. Again, nice beast to play. Yeah. Cool. Actually, when I bought this, it's called, I think they call it Lemon Burst. Yeah. And on the picture, it had a kind of like a lemony sort of colour. Mm-hmm. And it was really, really nice. When this rocks up, I thought, hang on, that's not what I bought. <laughs> yeah. It, it's not what I thought I was getting. Yeah. But it's, it's still... It still might not have white balanced the uh, photos out properly or something. Oh, we could get a different, different light. Yeah. yeah, yeah. A bit of one of my favourite guitars next, the 335. Yes. Very nice. You don't Blonde see enough. 335. Yeah. <clears throat> Beautiful. Yeah. You don't see enough 335s in this colour, in the natural. It's funny how the neck's a different colour, actually, on the back. Yeah, cool. I like that. Is that mahogany? Not sure what sort of wood's on the back. Yeah. Very nice. Beautiful. What have we got? And the 135. Yeah, beautiful. How do these go when you play, like, at louder volumes? Are, they, are these hollow? Yeah, they are they hollow. Are. Okay. Um, between the 335 and the 135, you can get a bit of feedback if the volume gets loud, but yeah. one thing we always try to do is limit uh, volume on stage. Mm -hmm. Do they sound so, quite different to each other as well? They do sound. Yeah. This sounds a little bit woodier than that. Beautiful. So uh, what's this beautiful little beast um, we got down here, mate? PRS. It is one of my favourite guitars. Yeah. Love it. What influenced you to get uh, Paul Reed Smith? I'm not sure what, what, what the main influence was. Yeah. I've just always liked, I've liked the look. Yeah. The first time I picked them up, just felt like an ice guitar to play. Mm -hmm. Every time I heard people using them, they just sounded magnificent. Yeah. And um, once I got it, used it, it did become one of my favorites. Yeah, cool. No, they're, they're great sounding guitars. And um, is this strict humbuckers on this one or? Uh, single, oh, yeah, yeah, beautiful. 
Calls, tap calls, it. calls yep. tapped, yeah. Music Man. Another really nice workhorse. Yep. Real easy to play. Um, beautiful guitar. I don't think Music Man get enough um, sort of credit, not credibility, but they don't get enough positive support i think in the in the world of guitars i think they're great they sound amazing some of the best tones i've ever heard are from music man guitars mm. but i think a lot of fender guys generally don't they kind of dismiss them before they even give them a chance not they're sure just why such a great guitar easy yeah. to play very comfortable to play mm. it's a nice sound too yeah beautiful dan smith era yeah 70s type headstock with a small small headstock or 70 types logo with small headstock yep i think this is a size and an 82 or hmm. an 80, i think it's an 83 actually yeah wow and you've had this since a long time yeah beautiful so not only you got a great collection of gibsons you've you're also a big fender fan as well um is... in terms of guitars i'd probably Probably play Fenders probably eighty percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. With well, a straight or tally, but neck on that's really nice too. Yeah, beautiful, cool. Oh yeah. Now, this next black strat. I remember someone once said, "Do can you bring your black strat next week?" And you said, "Which one, which one? is yeah. that? Is that one of the ones that <laughs> oh, I was talking them, about?" <laughs> one of them. So whether it's maple or rosewood next. Yeah. I, I find these to be great workhorses. Mm -hmm. They're so comfortable to play, so reliable. Yeah. Love and that's a US uh, standard. Yes. I take it. Yeah, yeah, beautiful. Yeah, it looks like it's done some uh, mileage in terms of being used too, this one. Yeah, a bit of wear and tear. Yeah. It's been relic the right way. You didn't just drag it out on, <laughs> on the road. No, actually all my stuff looks after pretty well. Yeah, no, that's good. There we go. <clears throat> One of my favourite tellies. Yep. I know she's got the uh, <laughs> some nice pickups in here. And got you to thank for that. Because <laughs> uh, first time I heard these was on your on your tally. Yeah. And it was just so impressive when I had bought them. Yeah, the Danny Gatton, Danny Joe Gatton's, Biden yeah. pickups just they don't buzz and they they sound like a tally. Yeah. yeah. Actually, it's funny because we used this live somewhere and um, I think Brian commented he when I spoke to him he said how good it sounded as well. So he heard you play, and uh, he said it's made. I think it might have been down at the bottom of the Blues Jams or something, and he, he was just blown I away remember, by the time. I remember yeah. G, down the GH. Yeah. And I, I think the comment was, that's a keeper. Yeah. And yeah. I think it was literally that. I'm never taking mine out of my tally. I, I just think they, they sound great. It's a, yeah, it's a beautiful looking guitar, too. He's sort of like of surgery. a. He's had a bit of surgery. I've changed the neck on that. Yeah. Original neck was a baseball. Yeah. And Rick. Said he'd love to love to get his hands on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He um, likes the big necks. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't. Yeah. So I, I changed the neck, and I did make make a change with the um, with the uh, controls. Yeah, spot it around, yeah, turn yeah. around. Cool. And Wayne gave us a bit of a hand, sort of putting it in there. Didn't fit originally. Yeah. So, thanks, Wayne. Cool. Next up. This has got to be the funkiest guitar I've ever seen. Little Steinberger. Yeah. Mate of mine rocked up with one of these uh, six months ago, a year ago. I said, look what I got. I thought, excellent. I've been looking for a traveler. Yeah. And this is just perfect. Yeah. Cool. It's a very different guitar. I mean, I think, do you tune it obviously from you down the bottom? You tune it from here? down there. Yeah. Problem is that you've got to get special strings. <laughs> okay. Got balls at both ends. Oh, you okay. You can get an attachment to use normal strings. Yeah. But these will cost you, I think about 30, 40 bucks a pop compared to a normal that, that really twice as expensive that's a bit of a and these have also price. like a flip down thing if you're playing it yeah. on your lap yeah. is that right yep yeah i remember seeing that yeah okay cool <laughs> cool yeah wow awesome nice workhorse is that something you'd ever use live or is it more for the novelty or um no i kind of got it as a travel and as, as yeah. backup cool i usually don't take backup guitars or basses I'm playing, but every now and then, if you need to have a backup, yeah, why nice. drag another guitar? Just it's it's nice and small. Yeah, absolutely, cool. So with all these great guitars, is there anything else on the horizon that you you got your eye on? Um, no, probably the only 
thing I'd like to do is have a set up a or finish setting up a strat <coughs> yep. with with humbuckers. That's where this thing comes in. Cool. Um, bought, all, bought all the parts, put it together myself. Yeah. Um, I want to try something with humbuckers, probably similar to the ones in the in the PRS. Yeah, nice. Cool. Apart from that, no, actually, I'm pretty happy with uh, with all the guitars that. Yeah, beautiful. That well, I use now covering all bases, definitely. So obviously, your guitar collection is huge. You're a bass player as well. How about your bass collection? Is it uh, anywhere near the size of? No, it's nowhere near the size. <laughs> yeah. Um, Fender Jazz, I just love them. Cool. This is a Jazz Plus, they have that for yonks. Um, don't use that one much anymore. Mm -hmm. Tend to use a, a standard Fender Jazz these days. Cool. Most of the time. Every now and then, go back to uh, something like a Warwick. Oh, that's heavy. It is heavy. Yeah. Beautiful beasts, but they are heavy. Um, in terms of balance, they're mm -hmm. not well balanced, it tends to kind of fall over. Did you say recently you had you bought a fretless bass? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Jazz, another jazz. Another jazz, yeah, okay. Um, well, I've used it a few times in gigs. Cool. All right, awesome. So there's a couple of other bass guitars, but they're, uh, they're uh, hiding I, out. Either piece or jazz. Yeah, yeah, nice. Awesome. So your pedal collection has been legendary amongst uh, a lot of the Melbourne musos that we know, and this is my first time seeing it. You actually have more than me, Dave, so I'm, I'm no. impressed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. right, let's have a look at them. Yeah. These are probably the most recent positions. Little workhorses. Cool. Hot cake. Had that for years. Made in New Zealand, New I think. New Zealand made, yeah. Yep. Very cool. Beautiful little box. No, I have, unfortunately don't use it enough. Yeah. Ah. Yeah, this hey, is your fault. Looks, yeah. yeah. These are great pedals. I think the first time I heard one of these was you using it in a jam. One of Wayne's jams. Yeah. You know who I heard use it that made me buy it? Brian. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> yeah, thanks, Brian. <laughs> Actually, speaking of your fault. Yeah. Th this one's your fault as well, bad monkey. Yeah, wow. Well, they're yeah. cool, man, yeah. for their price. They're like 50 bucks now, and uh, they, they sound pretty cool. Um, I had a bit of play around with this. Nothing spectacular. Yeah. I have ne never heard of that before. Solid gold effects. Yeah, maybe, Take yeah. Oh, okay, I'll cool, thanks. It. Cool. Symbol drive. Yeah, I've seen that one out, no. in the, out and about before. A couple of beautiful cli uh, clips on YouTube. Um, mine doesn't sound anything like it. Here's a question <laughs> for you. you got a lot of pedals. Do you um, reference videos online on YouTube to check out what things are, what they sound like? You know, coming from... Uh, yeah, 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 I do, but I'm kind of pretty conscious that when you listen to it on YouTube, it's not necessarily going to be like when you play it yourself. Yeah, yeah. Even when you hear somebody else using it, once once you get your hands on it, it's a totally different sound. Yeah, But yeah. it's all, I always use it as a starting point, as a reference. Oh, this is one of my favourites of all time, mate. <clears throat> um, yeah. Carbon copy, it's, it's certainly, a, it's definitely, my, this is my second favourite delay. Yeah. I tend to always go back to a Boss DD3. Yeah, they're fantastic just, pedals. As a workhorse, I just find that to be yeah, ideal. Beautiful. Love that. Um, <laughs> uh, Zen Drive, a yeah. couple of BB preamps. We'll come back to these. Yeah. We'll come back to these later on. Wow. Max on. Oh. Uh, this has got a little little tube in it. Yep. Um, I've got two or three pedals like this. A thing called Valve Job Fuchs. Yeah, similar okay. sort of thing. Yeah, really nice cool. pedals. All these overdrive pedals later I've come back to using a Maxon tube screamer because they. they oh, sound Maxon fantastic. used to make them to start off with. Yeah. OCD. Mm hmm. Hadn't used that for a while. Yeah, these are good. It was clear that Dave had accumulated what could only be considered a guitar player's dream in terms of effects pedals. I also noticed that he had some duplicates of his favourite pedals located in different rooms of the house. No, Dr. Scientist, Reverb. Wow, I didn't expect um, you to have anything like that. That's uh, These are great pedals. Yeah. If you're after again, an ambient going, going Reverb back pedal. back to bonding, we yeah, didn't bond. Yeah. It's not something that gets used much. Cool. Hmm. Another mild overdrive. Yep. Another Fuchs. Cool. 
Actually, th this, these are the valve jobs. Um, that doesn't even look like it's been opened. <laughs> no, it has. <laughs> okay. It has. Yeah. They, get, they get used and they get put back in. Yeah. It didn't come in this packaging. I packed them like this if I'm using the gig. Oh, wow. Yeah, beautiful. Um, really warm sound hmm. comes out of that. Yeah, Fuchs makes some nice stuff. Mm. I've never actually heard their pedals, though. I've only seen their amps. But, uh, I should not leave that one out as well. I cool. like to say much, end up getting another one. Yeah, wow, okay, cool. So, um, what else? Zen drive. Do you have two Zen drives or just the one? Uh, oh, here's the... Two. Hey, okay, two, oh, wow. A couple okay. of Zen drives, yeah. Like, yeah. Like, like the Zen drives. Oh, here's another one? No, that, that's the second one. Oh, that is, okay, one, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, luxury drive. This is one of my favourites. Just plain overdrive. Uh, yeah. Sorry, boost. Yep. Really nice boost. Cool. I haven't heard of some of these either, which is good because uh, the amount these of These are now sold by T-Rex. Yep. Um, you got a rat. Yeah, you got a rat. Um, cool. Again, probably a little, little too grungy for my liking. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Tech 21, I have used this for years. Oh, oh it's a sound. Sam's yeah, th these are awesome. For recording and stuff, you yeah. can get some great sounds out of them. I've never used one in a live situation before, but cool. Bunch of boss pedals, yeah. phases, overdrives, choruses. What do you think of the SD1? I like it. Yeah. I like it. I reckon it's one of the, the nicest sounding overdrives around. It's, it's great. I noticed you've got a Clapton Crossroads pedal, which I haven't seen for quite some time. They must have been um, a limited release of these. <clears throat> It might have been a limited release. Again, we never bonded. Yeah. A little too complex. <laughs> what else is of interest? Actually, DS1. Between SD1 and DS1, I think I prefer the DS1. Yeah, it's another classic. This one was one. modded by a guy in Sydney. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, really nice. That was my next really question, nice whether or not any of these were, were modded, but it looks like... Uh, some of them yeah. are. Some yeah. of them are. I've got a few things that are modded, keyly modded. Yeah. What's the most bizarre pedal you've got? The one that you just plug in and you go, well, what was I thinking? Or, or this is completely random now to the music I'm playing? No, I don't have anything like that's, that. That's great. <laughs> no, the, the only pedals I've got are the ones I actually really, really like. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Blues Drive is probably one of my favourite pedals. Yep. Um, it's another boss pedal, hey? You got boss. Yeah, yeah, look, uh, I, I find boss to be reliable. Well, what's that Tech 21 uh, pedal you got down the back there? That looks... I really like Tech 21. I, I think they make some great stuff. Cool, cool. made in New York slide. City and... Uh, yeah, cool. Oh, it's like the... Yeah, very cool. It's like the big brother of the the, the small one, is it? Or yep. yeah, very cool. Oh, actually, forgot about these. <laughs> Bunch of the original Marshall. Yeah, Marshall Governor, Drive Master. <laughs> uh, actually, got got the Blues Driver as well. Yeah, yeah. I've had a chance to use some of the more modern. Um, Marshall pedals, which are great. I've, I've never used any of these before. What, are these comparable to sort of like the Boss tones or a little bit different? Um, a little bit different. That's a bit too grungy for my liking. So yeah. Is that, uh, actually, probably Governor's probably closest to the Blues Driver. Yep. Cool. No, Blues Driver's the Boss one. Blues Breaker's the Marshall one. Yeah, I noticed you got the big purple pedal there with the, that large one. Oh, what's that? Fuzz face. Fuzz face. Wow, check out this. Looks pretty vintage, looks, looks this one. Like it is, it's pretty old. Yeah. Really out. poor design. <clears throat> uh, there's no external power. Oh, yeah. To change a battery, you've got to unscrew that. Yeah. Oh. It's easy taking it out. To put it back in, you've got to line up the screw with a hole. And there's only the one screw. On the back, yeah. And you've got to, it, it took forever to get it back in. Uh, cool. Is this one you're thinking of? Yeah, that's it. Yamaha DG Stomp. Wow. Nice multi-effects, but I don't tend to use multi-effects much at all. Yep. Uh, a couple of wire pedals. How many pedals do you usually use live when you play? Like, would you just take one or two, or do you um, do you have a board with 35 of them on um, there? I've, I've made up a really large pedal board. Yeah. Had just about everything on it, just to find that it was only using one or two, one or two pedals. Yeah. 
So if we want to move out there, yeah, I absolutely. What I tend to use. So this is your uh, tube screamer collection, or oh, just a couple of a few tube screamer samples. Yep. Maxon one like the Maxon used to make them anyways. That sounds like a tube screamer. And yeah. It's more convenient to use. I've actually got one of these. I've demoed one of these in the past. They're great. I think they got the. Is that a boost switch or something? Does it turn it into more of a bass boost? From memory? Yeah, that one there. Yep. yep. Cool. Very nice. So, are these some of these are what you've, you're basically using live at the moment, or? No, I will use them every now and then. Yep. In terms of live use, that's basically um, that pedal. That, that's a pedal board I use. Yep. Um, I, I typically just use just guitar straight into the amp. Yep. If I use effects, it'll be one of these. Bit of delay, tremolo. Um, Blues another driver. Got another blues driver. Oh, I've got a few blues drivers. There's, <laughs> yeah, there's yeah, one in yeah. here, one in there. There's Sorry, one I'm, in the, I'm, in I'm, guilty, I'm bag. guilty of that as well, so don't worry. It's all good. Yeah. I've seen you use the Zen Drive uh, a few times live as well. In gigs, I like, uh, sorry, in jams, I'll either take one of these. Yep. These days, so I just take it as it's just convenient. Yep. Um, but if I'm gigging, <clears throat> it'll be that in combination with one of these. So mm -hmm. I just plonk one of these on top on, on the side and plug them in. Cool. But that, that's basically my gig and, gig and rig. And I've never seen a wah pedal that small before. What What is that? That's your wah wah. Yeah. Beautiful little things. The only problem is, as you're stomp, stomping on it, it tends to move forward. Oh, yeah. Now, it's okay on the carpet, but if it's on the floor, it'll just start eventually move away from you. Yeah, yeah. You're so definitely got to find it. While we only brushed the tip of the iceberg with Dave's pedal collection, it was interesting to find out that some of Dave's favourite pedals to gig with weren't necessarily the most expensive ones in his collection. It was apparent that the bog standard Boss and Ibanez pedals were his go-to when it comes to playing in a live situation. Thanks so much for letting us go through your massive collection. It's, uh, it's something else. You've got one of the best amp collections I've ever seen. And Thanks. Yeah, you were right about your pedal collection being uh, I don't know. It feels like it's the tip of the iceberg, and there might be a few other little things hiding. Oh, there, there, the are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there, there are. Yeah, there are a few more. There are a few duplicates. Yeah, yeah. Floating around as well. Yeah, what an amp collection! Great guitar collection. You got stuff that Thanks. some people just would aspire to getting, like one of those amps or, or one of those guitars, so it's really something else. So thanks so much for your time, man. It's an absolute Enjoy. pleasure Enjoy. going through it. Thanks. Thank you. When gas hits, it can hit hard. In the time it took to produce this video, I now have three new guitars, two new amplifiers, and let's not even get started on the effects pedals. It's crazy and frightening to think of how much money I've spent on music gear over the years searching for that magic tone. Frankly, I don't even want to know how much I've spent on it, and I know I'm not alone. While we didn't have enough time to go through all of Dave's gear, what we did see was impressive to say the least. I said on camera it was one of the most impressive amp collections I've ever seen. I think it actually is the most impressive amp collection I've ever seen, and I just wanted to thank him for allowing us to come through to check out his stellar collection. Next time your wife, girlfriend, or significant other says you have a problem with collecting music gear, Show them this gas video as an example of where your collection could eventually end up if they're lucky. For those watching with musician friends or family, I urge you to share this video with them as I'm sure many of them can relate. I think sometimes gas and relationships are very similar in some ways. Some people are easily satisfied and they find the right amp and right guitar and can settle right down, while others are on the internal search for that perfect tone. The gas journey can be a lifelong road to travel, so buckle up. My name is Shane, and I have gas.